uh, Sheon Onigbinde is a co-founder of Budget. Uh, Sheon, thank you so much. Uh, Senator Aitainang is also with us. Make a sense of these figures for us, and let's see where we are. Are we in trouble borrowing this much, considering that the figures that we've stated earlier on the program and what DMO says about our rising debt profile from 2015, what is the state of our policy right now in terms of debt? All right, thank you so much. Um, and I'm happy that we're having this conversation. Uh, just yesterday, uh, the Minister of Finance wrote an opinion piece of how deconstructing the Nigerian debt story. And I think it was very, very important that uh, there's a public conversation on our rising debt. If you put the numbers into context, um, domestic debt uh, prior to the administration of President Muhammadu Buhari was 8.39 trillion naira. Now, the domestic debt has risen to 12.03 trillion naira. So that means the couple of like two years, we've added 50% of our total debt, we've added 50%, most of trillion naira to the domestic debt. Now, the same thing we have also done on the external debt component. We have from $10 billion, precisely $10.7 billion, we have risen now, now to another $15 billion. So on the external debt, on the domestic debt, we have added 50% growth within the period of two years. And don't forget our story as Nigeria, where we were coming from when it comes to debt. We exited the Paris Club and the London Club of Creditors in 2005 just to ensure that we don't spend the bulk of our revenue on servicing debt. But we're doing that right again. Now, in 2016, 44% of Nigeria's revenue was used in servicing debt, meaning out of every 100 naira, that Nigeria earned in 2016, we spent 44 naira on service and debt. And that's a big worry because that's among the highest in the world. And so the question is that when we talk about debt, we need to look at two things. We are borrowing too fast. And the question is, we need to be more clear and concise about what exactly are we borrowing about. Now, the current plan is 5.5 billion. We're going to take 3 billion to refinance domestic debt. We're going to take another 2.5 billion for budget support mechanism. But my question is, if you're taking 2.5 billion for budget support mechanism, for what exactly? You know, it should be properly stated. The President Mohamed Dwayne should have stated that clearly that these are the roads, these are the schools, and these are the hospitals, or these are the projects that we're trying to, not that we just may road, you think of this 2.5 billion, and we just put it in the, in, in, in the entire budget trough, and he ends up buying computers, cars, and other administrative capital items. We need to be more clear, concise, and transparent about why we are borrowing excellent debt. Don't forget that when we borrow excellent debt, there's always going to be a currency risk that we are putting into play here. Yeah. And the currency risk you're putting into play is that suddenly Nigeria devalues in currency, then we need more money to actually pay back this debt. So in some sort of way, federal government needs to look at things in a much more structured manner. Why are we borrowing? Because the pace at which it's borrowed, it's not great at all. We're borrowing faster than we are making revenue. We should put more, more attention about how do we deepen the revenue pockets of the federal government. Right now, Mr. Uh, if you look at the letter where, uh, that was written to the National Assembly, it did say that the projects that these, uh, some of these monies we're going to include the Mambela Hydropower Project, the construction of a second runway at the Namde Azikwe International Airport, counterpart funding for rail projects, and the construction of the Bodo Boni Road with a bridge across the Opobo Channel. But the big question is, all of this has been stated in that letter to the National Assembly. One thing is that you're boring. The other thing is that do we have that capacity to be able to service these loans and borrowings at the rate at which we're going? And what does the future portend for us in terms of our revenue and our earnings? When, when you say most of this project, what I mean by this project has to be clearly stated. You also not just stated that we are borrowing for this project. Some of the projects also have to come with some clear line cost benefit analysis to say what does it benefit us to build a real a coastal rail? What it was what's the benefit of that? Why not put a new port in another component of this country and we just take the car the all the, the, the haulage up the country? You know, what does it benefit us? We the clear line for a Mambila power project is clear. We need the Mambila power project of that size. But for most of what we are trying to do on rail looks like more of it is on expediency rather than the actual needs of the country as, as it is, as we want it to be. 
And if you look at it, like I said, for the four percent debt service to revenue, that is extremely huge. A Pew Research Center report in 2015 said the highest in the world in 2015 was Brazil at 44 percent. In 2015, we are around 29 percent. Now we are around 44 percent. And so that's the problem that as we try to take giant footprints on debt. You should also take equal footprints, giant footprints, the way we are trying to raise... Let, let, let's hear, for a moment, uh, Mr. Nubinde, let's hear from Senator Tainang on this one. Uh, Senator Tainang, do you think that the National Assembly will pass this proposal to borrow and perhaps will not ask the Federal Executive Council or the Buhari Executive, uh, led executive, to go look elsewhere rather than rise in profile? You heard what the budget expert said there, Senator. Yes, I heard what he said, and I don't want to disagree with him on many of the issues that he has stated. Because, one, what are we borrowing for? The project, it is project-specific and project-tied. Now, you've asked whether the National Assembly will pass. Mr. President has submitted this request to the National Assembly to consider and pass it as it thinks fit. But we, what the executive will do, what the ministers will do, and what the Mr. President will do and has done in the letter is to be specific as to what they want to use it for. And... Uh, if the National Assembly considers that there are other sources that it could be funded, well and good, because it is not in the interest. If you, if you are taking a loan on a matter where you have money somewhere else, I think it is not uh, advisable. But in this case, the National Assembly had seen, after examining the entire budget profile, they, bought, they approved, approved a budget of 7 point something trillion, and they said... Of this, we're only going to have about four or five point something trillion. We have a deficit, a deficit of, of two point uh, something trillion. Of this two point something trillion, we are going to use borrowing. So they had already approved borrowing in principle. Now, we are now coming with specific items of the borrowing for which we want to borrow for. For the National Assembly to approve again what it had approved that we should look for money to do. Again. All right. I'm afraid, uh, uh, Senator, that's where we have to leave it because of our time. Many thanks, Senator Itayana is a uh, spe senior special assistant to the president on National Assembly Matters and the co-founder of Budget, Budget Analyst, Sheo Nubinde. Thank you so much for your time on the program. That's our show for tonight. Many thanks for being part of it, everyone. I'm Sheo Akimbalo. Bye for now.